So this isn't by any means a new purchase. I've had this for actually quite a while. This was, I'll show you, here's the price tag. If I can get this open. Home hardware. I happened to be interested. I was at my local home hardware and I happened to be interested if they sold any Eton products because I know the local source here used to sell Eton products and they dropped they dropped their line of Eton products and stopped selling them. And now they're selling these cheap little AM, FM pocket radios. I don't even see any of the good Sony ones there. This has replaced my Eton FRX3. Here, let me pull that out of this drawer here. Oh, that was real good. Let me get my glasses adjusted. They don't stay on my blooming face. Um, here's the FRX3. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty worn out. I got. So I have an. I think I have an Allen key somewhere that I can open that with. See if I can get the uh, rubber, the rubber, whatever you want to call it, that goes over the key, over the uh, over the keys, back on there. As you can see, I really did. As you can see, this was uh, pretty overused. <laughs> they recently released a commercial for the newest. Uh, they upgraded to the FRX5 and called it. Now it's called the Eton Satellite. Or Eton Satellite. No, that's the Eton Satellite over there. The uh, Eton Sidekick and uh, they all they really did, I don't understand what the point in the Eton uh, Sidekick was, all they did was change the they got rid of the solar panel on the back and upgraded it to and just made it an ambient light <laughs> I don't know what what changed or what was different but uh, that was the, there's the Eton Satellite I was referencing to earlier I meant to say Eton Sidekick, but I said Eton Satellite. That's the Eton Satellite shortwave uh, all-band single sideband radio. You can go look, take a look at the review video I did on that. And I've been uh, ever since I was real little. I first when I first got into the uh, hobby, I've been a fan of Eton stuff. I've always bought an Eton stuff. They make really good, ruggedly built stuff. I mean, with Eton, you could drop the if you're clum as clumsy as I am, clumsy as I am, you can. It'll basically never break. Same with the Eton Satellite. Well. If it's cheap, cheaper plastic like you see on the Eton satellite here, well, you can't because it's underneath a bunch of photo albums. <laughs> but uh, I don't know how that happened. But uh, yeah, this isn't. I pulled this out. I guess this is. Yeah, this is from a rechargeable Eton battery that bit the dust on me. That's the only Eton satellite, Eton product that hasn't uh, lasted. But yeah, the other Eton products I have are like I showed you the FRX3, the Eton satellite. I got the Eton Field out in the garage. I got the box for it somewhere in here. I always keep the box for all my radios. But yeah, FRX5 was released in 2014, and then this was the version. They released this version afterwards. The FRX5 Bluetooth in sorry 2015. The FRX5 was released in 2014. And I think I got it what in 2016 or something like that. But uh, I guess I didn't fully charge it. I should have. Edmonton Should have fully charged it. So there's the weather radio service. Whoop, what was that? This is the weather radio service. Those of you in the U.S. you know it as NOAA. Here it's Weather Radio Canada. I don't know. It's kind of good timing to release this video because uh, Eton, not Eton, Weather Radio Canada or Environment Canada or Climate Change Canada or whoever wants to shut down 48 of the Weather Radio Canada transmitters. Targeting mainly the rural area transmitters, which I'll go over later, but anyways, we'll get straight into the review. So first of all, we'll go over some of the flaws that it has and stuff like that, but first of all, we'll go over the, uh, want to go over the features that are outlined here on the side of the box. So of course, it's got an AM at built in, it's got an AM FM radio, so of course it's got an AM FM radio, uh, weather band, NOA weather band, that's VHF, so that's 162 point. 400 megahertz UHF to 162.550 megahertz VHF. So that, of course, is a quick reference here. Uh, one, one six, six two four zero zero minus twenty nine. Relative humidity fifty eight percent. And that goes, of course, all the way up to. Uh, I get uh, channel 4-2, which is going away. It's one of the 48 transmitters that is being checked in. 
But uh, anyways, back to the features. Uh, it's got SAME, same alert system, which we'll go over. Uh, anyway, weather alerts, of course, it's Bluetooth compatible. 100% charge to most cell phones. You can charge your smartphones. Solar charging, so it's got the solar panel that's now in the most recent version. The Psytec has been replaced with a LED uh, ambient light panel. I don't know why they did that. That was the only thing they... That was just a waste of... Uh, again, I don't know why Eton released the Psytec. The only thing they changed was the solar panel. But, uh... Yeah, solar charging, crank charging. Of course, it's got the crank. That's popular with most. They are really well known for their... For the crank charging feature on most of their radios. And, of course, it has a lithium-ion battery, but it's not... You can't replace the lithium-ion battery once it goes and of course, that's what happens with most of the, most of the electronics that run off a lithium-ion battery. Uh, let's get something here. Of course, you end up over over time having to replace it. For example, like a BL5C uh, smartphone battery, which the Texan PL330 uh, powers off of. I'm not sure what kind of battery this is. It's a oh, here we go, 23195. A nickel cadmium. I don't know what that came from. And then this is from the original. What was it? the original? It was an orange radio. It was a real cool radio. It was a weather radio at uh, Eton. I had it even before I got the Eton FRX3, and I had for a little while the FRX2, and I took it back because it had garbage sound. It, the audio was so, audio was level was so low. It had terrible audio quality. Uh, quality of audio was terrible, but. Uh, yeah, 3.6 volts, uh, you know, there's three cells wrapped in shrink wrap. Alright, so we'll take a, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the features, so let's give a quick little overview here of what this, uh, overview of what you can get from this. So, the alarm function on and off button, of course, you can set an alarm, you can use it as an alarm clock. It's got the AM, FM radio button, so if I turn on the radio here. I can listen to the AM radio. There you go. There's 840 CFCW. Uh, it used to be 790 CFCW. And one thing that's uh, funny enough, one thing about the AM function on these is on these Eton radios, these Eton uh, emergency weather radios. They make for great AMDX radios if you're into AMDXing. That's how I got started in the radio hobby was AMDXing. Uh, with the FRX, the FRX3 is actually a pretty amazing AMDX radio for sure. Uh, this one's not bad, but I don't think it's as good as the Atlan FRX3. Of course it's got Bluetooth, I don't know if it's going to automatically connect to my, my cell phone. Oh, it's over there at the other side of the room. Uh, see, now it connected. And FM radio. So, we're going to talk radio here so we don't get talk stations, we don't get nailed by a copyright strike. Oh, well, that didn't. What the hell? That's usually uh, CBC French, but I don't know what they're broadcasting right now. Or CBC Radio 2 or CBC Music. I guess it's uh, Monday evening rap sessions on CBC. I don't know. I've never heard that on CBC radio, but they must be having some sort of Monday evening rap session on both stations. But uh, so you got you can listen to AM, FM, and then to get to the weather band, you hit the WB alert button, weather band alert, and you can press alert here. You gotta turn on the weather radio first to your local weather channel press WB alert and whenever there's a weather radio whenever there's a alert sent to the radio through the SAME system it'll set off the radio and it'll tell you on display either thunderstorm warning tornado warning or if you're in Canada you know snow squall warning uh, we had our first snow squall not too long ago the first time in quite a few quite a few years I think but uh, I don't know if I'll get channel 4 and this seems to be a little more sensitive on the weather band than the battle between F8 
uh, HP F8. Am I saying that right? FBF F8 HP isn't as sensitive on the weather band as. So this channel 4 cooking lake. I have once I had one instance where when I was younger on the FRX3 I was able to DX a station on channel 7, 162.550 megahertz. In uh, Brooks, Alberta, I think, or something like that. It's channel 1 Edmonton. It's got memory tune, so you can tune uh, into an FM station and set it into memory. So the channel, I don't remember how many channels you can preset to the memory. I don't have the manual to look at it. And then there's, of course, the menu. Scroll to the menu. Set time. You can set the alarm. You can set if you want the alert sign. So each setting is, to select the setting, you always got to hit the WB button. So if you want, you just you can switch between if you want either siren, voice, uh, I always keep it the siren. I know there's people in the weather radio hobby that prefer voice. For I don't know what the uh, I've tried it on. So there's that. Or you just hit the menu button again to save that setting. And here's where the S A M E uh, programming kind of comes in. And so what you do is if you want. The way SME or SAME works, hold on a second. So the way SAME or same technology works is you can program the radio to only send out alerts within your local county, your city, or whatever. Uh, here we go. So, WB button. See the so you got uh one, two, three, four choices that you can uh, choose from so you can set it to send your alerts from all counties within your area single county so just your county no no nowhere else just alerts from your local area or multiple uh, areas within around around you or whatever same thing as uh, all and just all for all counties around your state or province or whatever and so I have it set to all because it is a popular uh, it's EAS videos are popular there's a whole community dedicated to recording EAS's, EAS emergency uh, EAS messages and stuff and posting them uh, like on TVs and stuff the TV EAS test and stuff stuff like that it's a whole uh, whole community, just like the tech community, dedicated to it on YouTube. So that's how SMA, SAME works. And I forget what SAME stands for. Let me see if I can find a chart. There's a whole alert chart that comes in the manual. <laughs> this is kind of funny looking to the manual. I didn't think there was a, a lot of the stuff they mentioned in the SAME alert uh, chart. I didn't really think it was considered as something you would send out an EAS alert for, but uh, I'll see if I can find it. So basically, a quick rundown of how it works while I'm finding, while I'm searching for a chart here, is when your local weather station or whatever station you're tuned into sends out an alert, it sets off the the uh, radio picks that the radio is monitoring that station in the background while it's on WB mode, but it's silent. I'm going to turn it on here. And falling. Edmonton International. So you're monitoring it, but you're monitoring it silently. So there's no audio, you don't hear any audio. And the radio will pick up if when they send an alert, of course, the radio's. And so when the weather station cuts out, you know, the local broadcast, whatever, and sends out an EAS message, it sets off the radio. And the way the radio, the uh, S A A M, the S A M E technology system that's built into the radio picks up on picks up that there's an E A S 
emergency being sent from the local broadcast station is through the thousand hertz tone which I believe that they send data out with some of the uh, I believe there's data sent out through that tone that's sent through the radio but uh, that's how SAME works a quick rundown I don't know how good of a rundown that was but that was the best I could think of right off the top of my head the feet siren I don't remember what that means Oop. Some telephoto on that. Something message. Administrative message. Let's uh, see here's some of the. It shows you. See, boil, boil water advisory. Could have Flint, Michigan 2.0. So it shows you a different, I guess this is kind of, well, it kind of has a built-in EAS. I guess I didn't have to find the EAS chart. It shows you here, uh, the ones that are in here already. So of course, alert is on. You can, you can enable that or disable that. I keep hitting the wrong button. So, administrative message. Avalanche. Warning or avalanche watch. I think that's avalanche warning. Yet, and I won't take the time to go through all of them. But, you know, boil, boil water advisory or boil water warning, I guess it says. But, uh, there we go. Blizzard warning that's something you get quite often if you live in Canada. Child abduction, I don't get that very good. I don't think Weather Radio Canada sends out for child abduction warnings like NOAA does. I don't think they send out amber alerts. Coastal flooding. So you can go into the settings and look at all the different practice demo. So that's when they're sending out a test. Weather Radio Canada sends out a weekly test every Wednesday. And it's sent as through the data stream as an advisory via the again the thousand hertz tone. So the thousand hertz tone here only just a quick reference. Most of you already know what that is, but a thousand you go here. Of course, there's the YouTube ads. So that's a thousand hertz tone, and the data I think is broadcast through that to the radio, and that sets off the SAME system built in to the radio. So that's how that works. Um, there is a lot of uh, flaws with it, like you can't put AAA batteries in it, you can't replace the rechargeable lithium ion battery. It's got some wide photo on it, it's wide. Zoom out a bit there. Or whack the tripod. That was real good. Um, so, of course, of course, there is a lot of uh, flaws with it. Some people even seem to have trouble getting uh, using the auxiliary f uh, function on it. So you can plug in uh, the auxiliary feature on it. You can plug in an aux cable. It's like this. We'll get some uh, audio on that, or the headphone jack. So and I think, and of course, it's it's not in stereo. It's just in mono because it's only got the radio's only got one speaker. So we'll go headphone out here. Of course, we can't go uh, aux in. And I got to the, going to the stereo system here. So let's turn that up and. So I'm getting any audio here. Oh, that's because it's plugged into the run. Doing before that. Centimeters per hour. Low minus 19. Wind chill minus 17. In the evening. And minus 25. Overnight. 
For Wednesday, sunny. High minus nine. For Wednesday night. So there's that. Minus seventeen. Of course, you might hear some humming. That's because this is not grounded, obviously. But uh, the and I'll show you here real quick. If you watch it again, the uh, the headphone jack seems to be real touchy. Okay. Well, it's fine now. See? I don't know if there's a loose soldering joint or something on the back of it that's connected to the circuit board or whatever. We could try uh, spraying some contact cleaner in there. There we go. So just a little contact cleaner solved that issue. That's where you would charge it via uh, USB micro USB and you can charge your cell phone of course via USB um, I remember back way back in people still had flip phones you could charge it uh, via DC you could charge your uh, iPhone via before USB you would plug in a DC plug off an AC adapter into your flip phone and charge it that way that's what the FR old FR Anton FR 300 had uh, looking for my phone here. Oh, it's right here beside me. Duh. We unplugged the cable here. And the one thing I don't like about the charge on here is it drains the battery real quick. Got my cell phone here. And I just want to charge it. And I'm out, I don't know, stuck in the woods. Uh, I went hiking and I got out stuck in the woods somewhere. And can't find my way back and I have nowhere to charge my phone. I can't charge my phone because, you know, I can't make an emergency call on my phone because, you know, I can't charge my power up my phone because it's dead and I can't charge it. Well, luckily I have this and all I have to do is get some telephoto on that. Press the cell button on the top, way on the far hand right, right, way on the far hand right side. And you can hear my, see it says cell and you can hear my phone. See my phone says it's charging now, it's already 100% but you see in the corner it's charging. Charging over the point uh, in frame because it's flipping the viewfinder towards the lens, everything's backwards, it's like a mirror. So. But, uh, yeah, I'm charging my cell phone, and that wears the bat that uh, drains the battery fairly quickly. You can see I could use a charge. I it charges via a micro USB, of course. And it is Bluetooth, it is Bluetooth uh, compatible. So if I go on my phone here, I only got a minute left. I'll uh, swap the battery here right away. Let's go to my settings. Enable Bluetooth, of course. Bluetooth is on. You can see that's Aton. I don't think I don't know if that's the Aton field, which is also Bluetooth, or this one. But uh, we'll turn it on and hit the AM/FM button again. Hit it three times to get the Bluetooth, and now that means it's connected. So I can. I don't want to get nailed for putting copyright music in this video. So let's. So you go to TuneIn Radio, the TuneIn app, let's find a podcast or something. I probably will get nailed for that. Let's, uh, here we go, Shortwave Radio Archive. We'll wind this here. And with those cascades falling down all around us, it's another morning of musical ramblings. The place, Hollywood's Radio City, the man, Miles Sketch Henderson. And this... This is the National Broadcasting Company. This is KGEI, General Electric Station, San Francisco, California.
That's a course. I don't want to play too much of that in case I do get copyrighted. But that's a course. Uh, NBC Radio. Or that's of course NBC before it was a television network and it was NBC Radio. But that's the Bluetooth function there. And what I actually did because the iPhone before I got my I don't know where I put it now. My little here it is a headphone adapter or dongle they call it. I don't know why I don't get where they came where dongle came from. But it's a headphone adapter here. See the little lightning U lightning USB to uh three point five millimeter phono jack or I guess aux jack as it's known as now. It used to be called people used to call it a phono jack, but now everyone calls it an aux jack. Um uh, not sure when it changed but <laughs> I guess it did. Uh I still call it a phono jack. I don't know if that makes me old school but that's what I like to call it. Um, before I got that, so I could plug an aux, a uh, phono cable, into my into the adapter and into the aux jack on the side of here. I would uh, stream music or whatever I, w I wanted to uh, record off my phone onto a tape recorder or whatever to the Bluetooth on this, and it would output only of course mono, which was kind of a pain. I can do it in stereo, but I would. Shooting the Bluetooth to it, and then I go headphone out into a recorder to the mic jack on some sort of recorder and record what I, what I wanted to record on my phone or dub audio over that way from my phone. <laughs> or if I wanted to use headphones to listen to something on my phone and go for a walk, and I'd uh, put this in a little bag and I'd stream it my phone via Bluetooth to it and plug in a pair of headphones. Of course, it was a pain, I only had to, I only kept one uh, earphone in uh, the left hand side because. Uh, it was in mono, but uh, yeah, I only got the left channel because it was mono. But uh, that's what I used the Bluetooth for mostly on this. Um, but yeah, handy little. War bulletins, briefs that have been received. Announcement in London was made today that a Dutch. Apparently, it knows how to play, but my iPhone knows how to play its podcast by itself. Let's before I get copyrighted, open that, going back to sell. Over the memory tune function here. So that's one of actually that should be one one oh one point eleven, which is also from the local CBC tower over here. So I think to save a station if I want. Here we go. So that's CBC World, I think. You have to hold down on. Actually, yeah, memory three, memory four, memory five. That's 96.3 The Breeze. It used to be Capital FM, and Christmas is the last year. They always, all of a sudden changed. So there's the channel memory, and of course it's got a little ambient light on the top. There's been a lot of other complaints. I saw, saw a few complaints that the, it doesn't work properly. The ambient light doesn't turn on. Uh, of course there's the light. Whoop. There's the light on the side. A little flashlight. Quite a bright flashlight. Then of course if I turn it off and I double click, I get the, the red. Uh, emergency light. I guess if I'm stuck out somewhere, I can flash that at someone and they see it. I would use the flashlight. I wouldn't use that. I don't understand the point in that. If I were in a dark room, let me turn that off. You would be able to. See, if I were in a dark room, you'd be able to see the the little glow in the dark, a little green. See the green ring around here, and then the green ring around there. It's a little, almost like it glows green in the dark. If I shut all the lights off here, you'd be able to see it. It was the repeater again. Now you see that green light there. It's, it doesn't last very long. It fades away, but kind of a neat little thing to have. And you can see it on the top there. If I keep that ambient light on and then shut it off, there you go. You can see the little green glow in the dark thing here. Let me. And of course, on the back, it's got more. Actually, no, that's di it's different. I'm thinking of the FRX3. This is the solar panel. The solar panel on the FRX3 is on the top, but the new sidekick, like I was saying, you've replaced it. The uh, um, solar panel with a ambient light, LED ambient light, and I don't, they left the ambient light up here too. They left this flashlight, and this is a whole ambient light up here. I don't think they made this a solar panel. I don't know why they took away the solar panel. That was a cool. That's a cool little feature. If I put it under a uh, a light here. You see the radio starts to charge. I don't know if you can see that. Zoom up on the battery icon there. I am holding it under. You 
you can hold it, it's sensitive the solar panel is sensitive to light obviously and if I hold it under a mostly sun sunlight but if I hold it under a halogen lamp or something like that you can see here still not even in frame let's see right here in the corner you can see it's charging underneath the lamp so you don't even need sunlight to charge you can put a halogen lamp behind the solar panel and let it uh, charge function I'll take the telescopic aerial off here so it doesn't go flying off the crank charge so if I crank it for You know, that's just, uh, I personally think that's just the gimmick to get you to purchase the radio, you know, to make it look, uh, to get, to get the, get, get to, uh, for the seller to get the buyer's attention. Alright, so at any moment now, what is it? Almost uh, approaching the top of the hour. Uh, 12 o'clock, every Wednesday near noon, uh, they'll do the weekly EAS test broadcast. There it is. The thousand hertz tone will sat in. You are listening to Weather Radio Canada. Look for the test of your alert equipment weather radio broadcast every Wednesday near noon. The type of message is limited to mercredi midi sur Radio Météo Canada. Ce message est destiné à tester les fonctions d'activation d'alarme et d'affichage des nouveaux récepteurs Radio Météo. It's always uh, essential to have a, I always think it's an essential thing to have, especially if you're a radio hobbyist, uh, have an emergency radio like this. But, um, yeah, no, if I were to rate it, if I were to rate it, maybe rate on a, I don't know, a three, uh, four, give it a four star rating, there's flaws that it has, but overall, for what it is, in my opinion, it works totally fine. Those flaws don't really bother me at all. It's not one of those radios where, like a shortwave radio, where I, I want everything to be, you know, I want the single sideband to be perfect. You know, you're looking for that really good shortwave single sideband radio. That doesn't really matter. If it if it's a good, if it works good enough for what you need it for just emergency, weather emergencies, then that's all that matters. It's a, uh, again, it's a, it's uh, better than the, the only Eton we want to stay away from is the FRX2. It is real crap ass audio. But, uh, no, other than that, yeah, maybe a four, four and a half. Probably just, a, yeah, just a four. Four star rating. Uh, I would recommend purchasing it again if you need, if you're looking for a, a good quality emergency, all hazards, weather radio, uh, no weather radio. Yeah, this is where I'm going to go ahead and end off this video. Um, always remember, enjoy your radio. It doesn't matter what kind of radio it is. Enjoy your radio. Uh, next, see you in the next video on uh, Saturday at on either 1600 UTC or 0200 UTC. But uh, yeah, take care for now, 73s, and we'll see you in the next one.